everyone. Let's begin today's lecture. This is lecture five. In last lecture, lecture four, we discussed Confucian philosophy of Li. To some extent, Li provides a form in which hierarchy and authority take shape. Li also helps to maintain the normative order that is indispensable in human life. We spend much time talking about the process of ritualization, or we say the process of humanization, the process of socialization, the process of cultivation. When we came into this world, we were just biological being, not human being. In order to be human being, we need to go through a process of humanization. Ideally, we come out being a human. However, not everyone can grow to the same degree of humanness. Some would be a shengren, sage. Some would be a junzi, gentleman. Some would be a xiaoren, an immoral man. How can we differentiate a shengren from a junzi or a junzi from a xiaoren? Intuitively, a shengren is more moralized than a junzi, and junzi is more moralized than a xiaoren. We need a principled account to explain the different degrees of morality. This is the topic we are to address in this lecture. That is Confucian philosophy of Ren. The Chinese character Ren is composed of two parts. The left part means human. The right part means two. So Ren as a whole could be understood as something that concerns two human beings. Well, Peter Butberg suggested that Ren be translated as co-humanity. This, in a certain sense, gives a good illustration of what Ren means. Ren is an essential property of human beings which can be detailed as a social being, a ritual being, a moral being, or a political being. Historically, when the word Ren appeared in two hunting poems of the Book of Poetry, it was a picture of two lusty noble huntsmen who are presented as handsome and Ren. It was suggested that the meaning of Ren in this context be something like manly or virile. Starting from there, Confucius might have given a moralized version of true manhood or perfect virtue. Anyway, we might characterize Ren as an attainment of a human excellence, which is a whole embracing all the separate virtues, including social virtues and ritual virtues. It turns out to be a capacity to make the individual act well in all the encounters of social life. Confucius did not think Ren was the prerogative of those people in authority. Ordinary people may have also possessed this sort of virtues. At the beginning of Zhou Dynasty, the ancestors of Zhou people or noble ministers already proved their right to authority by the possession of virtue. Moreover, ordinary people were able to teach other ordinary people how to achieve Ren. 
that is how to become nobleman, Junzi. Just like nobleman in English, Junzi in Chinese was a social term rather than an ethical term to begin with. It was used to refer to high birth and high rank. Well, nevertheless, in analects, it has acquired the moral meaning. Although Confucius emphasized the moral dimension of Ren, he did not reject the social meaning of Ren. Ren still meant hereditary high social rank. Confucius still cherished the hope that those of noble birth might be influenced to become the noble men. That is, noble men in moral sense. He believed that when the Tao prevails, those in authority are the ultimate source of the moralization of the whole society, in particular, the Son of Heaven. The Son of Heaven stands at the objective locus of sacred authority. This is a position from which society as a whole could effectively be transformed by action and teaching. If the ruler is a sage, or at least allows himself to be influenced by sage ministers, then the Tao as a total state of affairs could be realized. However, Confucius made it plain that the teaching of Ren could be separated from political authority and become a force for transforming society. According to Confucius, Ren is not moral power which is simply latently present in men. It is rather an existential goal a man is to achieve for himself through his own self-cultivation. It is the result of such a self-effort that can be taught to others. The process of the teaching of Ren is, in essence, a process of knowing how rather than a process of knowing that.